Yes, neither is bad today. Today we've got something called a multi-system. Now a lot of you have asked me, but how can I get loads of ISOs onto one USB drive and be able to boot them as a live like USB drive? Well, here we have the answer. Here we go. It's called now. Well, it's now called multi-system. It used to be called a multi-boot, and it's available for Linux as a TZ file thing. Well, I'll say like that anyway. So you have to undo it and install it. But it's no big deal, it does it all itself. That's the site you get it from. Go and get it, check it out, install it, and have a go. So we're going to give it a play. So I'll boot it up. It's called Multi System, as you can see. And there's my little 4 gig drive that I've just chucked in. I want to validate it. So I want to click Yes to validate. Remember, it's from France, so some of the conversions are not so good. Now, I didn't have a system label on it. So it's made a system label, but now what I've got to do is click OK unplug the drive and then plug it back in again. So what I'll do, I'll do that, there you go, just plug it back in, there it is. And it has to be FAT32 as well, by the way. Sorry about that, chap, but it's just, oh, it's a bummer. But hey, one of those things. So we'll boot up multi-system again, and I'll just show you basically how it works. So we'll highlight our drive again, we'll validate, and all of a sudden, it'll go through its stuff, as you can see, and it is, nice little GUI. No more command line for doing this sort of stuff. Super bleeding duper. So what I've done, I've put one of my ISO files up, as you can see. I'm going to move it over, move it over there, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now basically all you have to do is drag and drop. So I'm going to drag Madbox over. I done Madbox last week, no? Remember? Of course you do. And basically all it does is copy it over to the USB drive. As you can see, blah dee blah dee blah da dee da 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 Takes a little while, so I've cut the video in certain places, I've always been waiting for ages. Remember I'm recording again, and this is the basic test machine, it's still the dual core test machine I'm using. Right, it's finished, it's done what it's got to do, and we have to wait a little bit, and we'll wait a little bit. Oh, it's done, it tells us some more information, not that we need to read it, it's doing it all itself. It just gives a, a CLI readout of what it's doing. Now as you can see, that is now on my stick. And it's got its own boot menu too, so that's super duper. So of course I'm going to put Tiny Core on, I look. Drag Tiny Core over into the box. Does it stuff, it won't take 10 seconds. Do I want to overwrite? Well of course I do, because I want to do the grab menu again. Because it rewrites the grab menu for you. So it gets all the boots in on your USB stick. So now we've got two distros on my little stick, and it's only used 511 megabytes. Even better. So I thought I could get a nice big one now. So I'll get Jolly Cloud, the latest one. Drag it over. It thinks about it a little bit. And all of a sudden, it does its stuff again. Now, we could be waiting some time here. So we'll have a little chat. What's the weather like around you are? You're in tea or coffee? Chocolate biscuits? Or bourbons? I don't know. I have bourbons today. Really nice. Oh, I do like a bourbon. Anyway, nearly finished now. Look, see, I'll cut that bit. And we'll wait for it to finish, and it will go through the same little thing it did before. Now, in theory, <coughs> excuse my cough, you can actually get, with an 8 gig, gig stick here, you can get loads and loads of distros on one stick. All your testing distros, all your system stuff, uh, your penetration distros, if you're into penetration, you know what I'm saying, boys and girls and stuff. They go doing me grub stuff again, up down the grub on the stick as we go. So there we go, look, we've got three on there now, look. Lovely three distros on my stick, and I've used oh, did you think really nothing at all? Now, this is we're going to see some errors. Now, this is the Debian net install for Lenny, so you know it could be a bit of a problem. Well, you will get some error marks, but it does work, I can guarantee that. So, you drag it over to the box, off it goes again. But this time, it wants to download some stuff from the net. So, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me again. It has to do a little bit of stuff for us to do its bits and bobs. Now you will also get some more errors in a minute, but don't take no, no notice of them because it does actually work. I have tried it. Although you do have to do some other stuff to some sticks and certain machines, it's not universal just yet. You know what I'm saying? See what I mean? Look, got some errors there, but it does work. Guaranteed. No problem. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. So, anyway, that's all done. Done what it's got to do. You need to do grub again, look, because it's updating the grub files on your USB six. What you're going to boot from? So super. So now I've got Madbox, Tiny Core, Jolly Clad, and the Debian Lenny install for Net. Super duper. I've not used hardly anything on my uh, stick really, so I could actually drag all them over if I really wanted to, couldn't I? But uh, you can do that because I want you to download it and sort it out. 
So what else have we got here? So anyway, apart from my four distros, what can we do? Well, quite a lot. You can actually directly open it from VirtualBox or the other one, the QAME, what it's called. If we go to the menu, you can update your grab, update your bug, backup and restore, debug, add a persistent mode so you can use it as a proper proper distro from a live CD or sorry, live USB and stuff like that, install virtual box, stuff like that, and format the key from here, but you don't actually really need to do that too much, really. You can download live USB or CDs or DVDs from this little section here. There's plenty here. What if I'd want to do that? I don't know. I've not actually tried that section, because I only download this tonight. I've been using about an hour. Now, this is a good one. I did this earlier. Create a CD to launch the USB. You know you've got some, some machines that won't do from USB. It says no. But if you burn the CD put it in and do it from there, it will actually boot the USB. In some cases. I've tried it on three machines in the house. Hmm. Only worked on two. There is a non free part that you have to download. It's free, but not as in free. You know what I'm saying? There's some certain apps that you can't do. But yeah, on the whole I really like it. Now I took it up to the sneaky girl's room because she's got the uh, my old test machine which is a Pentium four three gig. Booted lovely. No bleeding problem. So I'll quit that. Yeah, but, but it's really, really nice to use. So I'll open up my USB drive there. There's my boot menu and all my stuff I've just put on it. Blimey, what can I say? I'm brilliant again, aren't I? Sneaky looks going out to play in the snow in the morning. I might even do a proper video. See you later. Bye-bye.